Welcome back. That was an intense and extremely exciting uh, session. Meeting those 15 European Young Innovators is also, I think, for all of us to highlight. I'm very glad uh, to kind of close the day today with um, four people who are very close and for sometimes already very long times part of the European Young Innovators community. Um, I'm here joined by Odetta, Dimitar, Gina and Taha Ray. Um, and I would just like to start very briefly because I think what WSA or what makes WSA special is the kind of community and the people. Um, and to give the, the winning teams and those who came just in new this year, I want you to share a bit when and how did you became part of the community and what is like your takeaway? How should you leverage it or how should you make use of the uh, community? Um, since we are four ladies, Dimitar, men first. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was expecting this. Thank you, <laughs> Nora. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, thank you for inviting me and to share my insights. I am with uh, this whole uh, organization happening for now. It, it's a fifth year, uh, I think. And uh, I, I at the beginning I I joined as a just as a spectator. But after right away after that, um, I joined uh, in the program uh, on a different uh, points and level. Uh, since I'm uh, I'm educating young people in in, in Macedonia, I uh, onboard a lot of young people who um, became part of this big family uh, of um, sharing European values. So I bring students uh, every year to the to the to the to this event uh, who participate in the in the student uh, part of the of the program. And uh, to be honest, uh, the feedback that I gave uh, I have from my students back, it's uh, they appreciate a lot and they learn a lot uh, the, uh, to this whole process. So from year to year, the program and uh, the the curriculum is able, is evolving and bringing more more value uh, for those students. That's one side of my story. The other side is I'm part of the jury uh, uh, since the beginning and um, uh, I can see uh, from a perspective uh, in these last five years um, I'm seeing a lot of um, uh, uh, creating a, a lot of progress in, in the quality of the project that we have each year uh, participating uh, in the whole uh, whole thing. I remember the project like the, from five years and now now we are talking about um, uh, AI, about uh, augmented reality, stuff like that. It's quite interesting to see how the young people, young minds uh, of Europe are uh, evolving and, and, and looking uh, forward. And I want to stress out one thing that I'm, I, I noticed this year in the, in the, in the, the whole competition that a lot of green project so this young z generation they care about green and that's really um, what i'm excited and I, I'm, I'm i want to see more in the coming year so it's a quite difference between my other generation and these young people that are participating so i, I love that part to see i completely agree that's also i mean we originally um named this session after the Green New Deal and digital age, um, so um, areas, policy areas of the European Commission. But um, as you just said correctly, it's uh, a lot about uh, green energy, green tech, protecting the environment, climate change. But last year, we also saw a lot about health tech, so during the pandemic. And we also saw last time a lot about um, gender um, empowerment for women, um, yeah, closing the gender gap and this year again a lot around uh, education so i also um, i'm also very uh, excited to see that the young people really uh, care for society tahere you're probably the youngest member um that joined the community last year because you were a winning a winner yourself right yeah so hello everyone i'm really glad to be here thanks for having me um yeah so i joined the community uh, since last year as a like uh, the starting point was um, being nominated from Luxembourg, project from Luxembourg as the uh, most innovative digital solution from Luxembourg. And then from there, um, uh, I was also among the uh, like 40 uh, winners. And then on May, uh, it was the announcement that uh, I got the Global Championship Award. Uh, and um, yeah, it was like a... Um, uh, as much as I was happy, I was also um, 
uh, let's say surprised because all I, I saw when I was reading the project description, they were also great, like like the project uh, we saw today. And um, I'm glad that uh, yeah, I could uh, we could still uh, get the global championship award. And uh, after that, I even even felt more responsible on <laughs> what we are doing, as it was also recognized from the jury members that like um, it, that that is. Um, what we are doing, which is also in line with education, as you mentioned, like it's like a raising subject. Um, uh, yeah, it's uh, uh, it's uh, having the, the importance and also, yeah, uh, especially on uh, when like uh, education of the special education need group or like, uh, for example, the closing the gender gap or um, for the uh, like inclusion in education, the different, uh, like they all come to education, but like, let's say different aspects of education. Um, and uh, since then, since I joined the community, I, uh, first of all, I got to know um, great people and uh, very young creative uh, entrepreneurs and um, yeah, which uh, helped the whole um, the networking, but uh, as last year and I see still this year, the, the event is online, so I really hope to meet uh, everyone hopefully in May in Graz. And uh, yeah, very much looking forward to it. I, I very well remember after the jury meeting and after you pitched that, um, I mean, you were tackling the problem of uh, young kids um, who don't, who learn uh, mathematics uh, not in their native language. And I remembered um, that a jury member from uh, Ghana uh, immediately got in touch with us and said, actually, that's exactly the point and exactly the solution that, that we need in our region. I think that's also the things about, uh, that's, that's the beauty of WSA, that you learn about solutions that come from a completely different scenario, but actually you see that they would also um, solve a problem um, in your own country and that sometimes a European a solution could also potentially solve something that in another market. Um, Odetta, you were also a winner back in 2015, right? Yes, very I remember true. Blue, blue Blue. Scene. <laughs> blue Blue, yes, a language learning platform, so very much in education space as well. Um, and then I came to Singapore in 2016 to celebrate uh, the winning. Um, I was just mind blown, really. Um, I'm a TEDx organizer, and how I like to tell my friends about WSA is for an example of um, at TEDx, there is a bunch of really amazing people changing the world on the stage. The rest is there to admire and to get inspired. At WSA events, the audience is full, like the whole audience is those people who actually inspire um, and are actually changing the world for the better. So ever since 2016, I really raised my hand and I wish to be part of every event of WSA or like as many as possible. And that's how I came to um, uh, the youth part of, of the WSA. Um, I became a judge, a mentor. With Dimita, we hosted uh, pitch presentations actually on stage, not only on virtual, in the virtual uh, world, but in actually physical events. And I can just say that being part of this community uh, really fills me with motivation, with knowledge. Um, it provides me so much learning about what is happening across the world and how people are actually devoting their lives um, to social benefits and social good, not necessarily for profit. But on the other hand, I remember in 2018, then we were in Vienna, um, a lot of people were talking about like, so how do we actually start making business models that generate revenue and are actually um, providing ability to be sustainable, not only rely on some grants. And I really like to see the shift of um, a lot of um, a lot of projects right now that they are thinking about um, sustainability in terms of from actually generating revenue, because that means that that its impact can travel much further and reach many more people as opposed to rely on just funding. Um, so uh, yes, it's really great to see also the quality of the projects, um, the thinking behind it, the traction that is progressing year on year. Um, and I'm super grateful to be part of this community because I can actually get inspired, get uh, knowledge, 
and meet amazing people who stay friends and contact well beyond uh, just the events themselves. Gino, talking about impact, I think that was one of your most asked questions uh, today as a jury member. What is your actual impact? How do you measure your impact? Uh, so I guess you agree a lot with um, Odette that, that that's something that maybe we even have to also support those entrepreneurs even more. How did you start to be involved and what's your takeaway or your outlook? Yeah, um, so for me, I joined the WSA um, when it was the European Youth Awards in 2019. Um, then I went to some hackathons and I was working with young people in person um, developing their business idea, particularly it was a health tech hackathon that I started on. Um, and it was something that I'd never really encountered before. I'm not the most techno technology minded person at all. I still have to get my friends to help me use um, Instagram. But it was something that definitely um, opened my eyes to so many different ideas and so many different ways that we're doing things. Um, from there, being part of the WSA has completely changed my career. So now I'm a PhD researcher looking at digital social entrepreneurs, which is entirely what the WSA stands for and works with. So for me, impact is always at the heart of what I do. And I think I always have WSA to thank for that. Um, <laughs> and it's not just that, but it's the friends that I've made, particularly the past 18 months when we've been locked in our houses, the friends you make through this community that are very like minded, they're very socially conscious much better at tech than me, but also just have so many interesting stories and ideas. And it's something that being part of WSA, I now am on the lookout for these new ideas, these new interesting ways. What can I do in my day to day life that incorporates the social technology? So add ons on your browsers, different things like this. So, yeah, it's, I always like to sit and think about my impact on the world. And that's why I critique other when question other businesses so much about their impacts, not just what profits they make, but what they're doing for the people around them. Because I think COVID probably taught us that we need to be so much more mindful of the people around us. So that's Thank my you, Gina. journey. Um, so one topic that also Peter announced before was uh, European solidarity. Uh, Odette is coming from Lithuania, Dimitar from North Macedonia, um, uh, Gina from the UK, who unfortunately decided to leave the EU, but still <laughs> um, part of the European region and Harry from uh, Luxembourg, where uh, some of the European headquarters are based. So when we talk about European solidarity, and I think that's something, or at least I also personally, I think that um, if you hear about the solutions to problems that you maybe even haven't been aware of, helps you to um, learn about empathy, about some understanding of local circumstances, how different it is when we talk about education, if we see um, what does it mean in Finland versus maybe Serbia. So uh, what is your take there and how can specifically also during the COVID crisis where borders um, uh, closed again, where we could not travel, where it was about nationality, about how how would you believe can we use such a community or initiative or what have we do to kind of support this and uh, encourage this European solidarity. Anyone who wants to start. Okay, let's let's start again. The circle with me. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's a, it's a quite interesting question, Nora, that uh, you have asked. Uh, uh, with uh, the COVID crisis, every, everything uh, start to to um, to in the fifth gear uh, to speed up uh, regarding the digitalization, especially in my country. Um, we completely at my university completely switch uh, online and we are still online, kind, kind of online. Um, uh, let's say 70% uh, is taught on online, 30% offline. Uh, and uh, that uh, show us to everybody, starting from me and, and to my country and, and uh, the bigger region that Everything can be done easily. Uh, all the barriers that we thought that we have um, uh, before uh, the crisis and all those borders uh, in the mind, uh, all those uh, difficulties that uh, connect or interconnect, um, the crisis shows us that this is really relative uh, from the point of view of connection and, and making a, a, a global impact uh, starting from Euro Europe and, and, uh, and in, in the world at all. So. Um, sharing, uh, having opportunity and sharing the, the values of uh, EU uh, with a lot of people uh, now I think is, is, is becoming more and more easy because we got used and uh, uh, a crisis show us that they can easily connect and do a lot of interesting stuff. Uh, everything uh, was switched online and still is online even though in this event 
um, the physical part is moved uh, to May. Uh, uh, fortunately, so uh, it shows us that uh, there is uh, other solution, other way to to stay connected and to, to create a more impact. So uh, I, I will round out that uh, even though uh, still is not uh, uh, we are not living in a pre perfect world, uh, still we can share those uh, those values and we can now more easily uh, uh, progress and uh, co connect with a lot of people around the world. So you would your take would be technology kind of connects us and that's also yeah. through yeah. connection you can show solidarity. Any yeah. other thoughts on that? Um, I can go next. Um, I think from my perspective, it's it's two opposing poles of what's happening offline and online, really, because offline we are being um, divided, really. Uh, all of a sudden it became like you became an enemy but the second you landed in a different country. Um, and and that is really dividing uh, dividing people across countries, but also dividing people within countries. Whereas online, actually, the opposite trend is happening. Like um, I think on the first weekend of COVID pandemic, there was an initiative in Lithuania that organized and to hack the crisis, and over a thousand people have joined to create projects that are still running. Um, so I would really love to see these projects that have started um, off the back of the pandemic and that are changing our world for better, really, because uh, digital solutions actually optimize a lot of inefficient systems that are uh, present still from, from just like the past. Um, I would really love to see those projects crossing the borders and helping to unite people, not only digitally, but actually, again, physically, um, through, through that kind of, you know, unity not only to have like these amazing projects happening in Lithuania, in Macedonia, uh, in Serbia, but actually crossing borders and, and then helping people to, um, to again become united. Gina, Tahari, anyone of you um, who wants to share something about solidarity or cross-national empathy or something around that before we go to the next topic? Oh, yeah. So, oh, please go ahead. <laughs> Um, all I'll really say is obviously in the UK where um, it's a very divided nation since we decided to leave the European Union. Um, I live in Wales. I think we have a much very different mentality towards Brexit and the EU than maybe those across the border for us. Um, but I think for me, the one thing that's come out of the pandemic is we've learned how much loneliness affects people. Um, I think we've all been isolated for the past year and a half and a lot of young, particularly young people, because that's the demographic I speak for, have been using technology, so social media, to connect with other people and not just within the local community, not just your friend down the road, but people across borders. I think the one thing we've seen a huge rise of is, is activism for causes that actually affect a lot of us across Europe. So these different rises in the far right regimes across Europe, a lot of young people are now connecting based upon this common ideal of what we want Europe to look like for us and what we don't want it to look like. Um, and that's obviously stepping away from the entrepreneurial tech side of things, but it's using tech to connect for social good and for social understanding and for learning more about justice for people. Tahari? Uh, yeah, so um, I really think that after uh, the, the pandemic, like it somehow showed uh, uh, us like a, a very um big that how much uh, this solidarity is important and how uh, like I remember at the beginning like Italy was the first country who was uh, like uh, um, uh, struggling uh, and then after that uh, the, the help of the they needed the help of the other countries but that during the pandemic uh, it was like that uh, the whole um, community was like that, that uh, I could see that the mindset was changing a little bit during the time, uh, not only uh, on the like country level, but even within our um, within one country, between the cities, in, in one street, between the neighbors. Like um, it, it's sad, but uh, uh, like in, in our neighborhood, it was for the first time that I was seeing some of my neighbors. It was like the time that we uh, got out of the home. I don't know with through this. A clapping uh, evening time that we started like uh, talking together, getting to know them, and um, this uh, quietness uh, 
uh, the whole um, a piece uh, like showed us, okay, what is exactly now, what are the importance, like we are running all day, weeks and months to like uh, for, for the businesses, but at the end, what we need is this um, solidarity and also to like feel that we are not alone, we are like, um, we are supported within the community and like uh, more supports that we receive, more we also feel like that we need also to give back something to the community and to the society. So that's uh, that's how I see the, the importance there, that like you're feeling that you belong to society and you also have a role there that you get support, but you also need to get the support back. Thank you all uh, for the very optimistic um, uh, statements. Um, all of you four were part uh, of the jury. You just uh, watched the 15 European Young Innovators. Um, Dimitar pointed out rightly uh, that first, I think the quality increases kind of year by year, and I'm amazed uh, what young people are um, uh, yeah, able to do. And secondly, also that there's a, a kind of trend in terms of uh, societal topics that they work on. But um, I know you have very different backgrounds, so Tahare and, and Odette more from the entrepreneurial background and then Dimitar and Gina more from maybe also the academic. Um, what are your, uh, do you have some general advices or recommendations for those young entrepreneurs or anything that came to your mind um, today during the pitch is something uh, we have to, they have to focus on or be it in terms of fundraising or be it in terms of making connections or how to present themselves, whatever it is, um, I'm sure that you had some first thoughts and uh, it would be great if you can uh, share some of your yeah, general recommendations for these 15 European Young Innovators. Uh, the, I was uh, mind blown from some of the, uh, from the pitches and the ideas and I learned a lot uh, myself even. And what, uh, when, when you were talking about how, uh, what the first thought, a lot uh, what I should uh, recommend uh, do not stop to, uh, to learn from the point of my background like um, l l l there is a times that a lot of uh, changing happening uh, in, in, in no time and there is one famous phrase uh, learning on the fly so I would recommend to those young people that uh, to not uh, stop uh, learning and to learning on the fly because the technology is changing the, the shape is changing the society the environment and that's something that they need to be to be stay alert and to adapt and to learn uh, about new new things that uh, is happening around them, and uh, that's one of advice. And uh, regarding uh, the, you mentioned the, the difference in the in the in the in the quality, uh, like the, I I don't know what to say because there is a probably a generation gap gap between myself and and those young uh, people that are pitching um, they they uh, strive for knowledge and for uh, for uh, let's say uh, uh, prove themselves in front of the the world and they they came and they came to the scene uh, more prepared than for example what I have seen in the past so to keep up with good work and do not, to to not uh, to stay inspired in, in in the future because. Uh, only with hard work uh, and uh, um, agile uh, approach in these times probably they will succeed. Odette, I know that you just went through a whole phase of business modeling, business modeling for social entrepreneurs. And I know that it's, uh, I mean, it's a topic I think that we can still not talk enough about is how to find sustainable business model if your main focus or your main purpose is not exit, uh, fast scale, fast money, but the social impact. Um, so any general recommendations that you might want to share in this direction? Um, I really believe uh, that companies or even sustainable projects like sustainable, uh, like um, NGOs who are focused on, on making the world better place should at least try to have a sustainable business model uh, because that is of course there's so much more funding happening around the world it's probably much easier right now than it was five years ago let's say um, but not having to rely on on grants and funds um, is actually allowing to carry that impact as i just said previously 
uh, much further. So my recommendation is really to uh, to all entrepreneurs that we've seen today, just like a lot of them are actually doing that already, but find those niches, find those ways, be creative about your business models and try to monetize because there are so many good examples around you of how this is done in, in a sustainable and really socially uh, friendly way. Um, I'm not sure if that's very concrete, um, but I guess resilience and really being creative, learning a lot and really kind of learning from examples from others um, and learning from people, from all the communities that you're part of is the key to actually uh, make better decisions, find more creative solutions. So I would really advise that you try to do that across uh, around the business model as well. From your perspective now, also talking to a lot of investors, do you have the feeling that this trend of impact investment, social entrepreneurship, is, is that also translating into real money and into real investments? Or is it a buzzword or do you have the feeling, yes, there is an understanding and people are ready to also invest if there is a social business model, a valid social business model? Um, so I, um, the experience that Nora is referring to is from Norway. Um, I've just been through an accelerator myself and got an investment that's not official yet, but soon will be. Um, and what I can say is that, especially in Scandinavia and Norway, um, sustainability aspects of a company are high on an agenda of investors. Um, and at least in Scandinavia, um, it's very rare that a business without sustainability impact, without positive impact, would actually be able to get investment. I would not be able to comment if that's the case in, let's say, US. Um, but one point is that just the sustainability aspect, just the impact, like the positive impact that is being made by a project is not enough. There still has to be money uh, coming in off the back of that. Um, so I would say that Unfortunately, still, we're in a stage where investors prioritize money over impact and sustainability, at least from my perspective, from what I experienced. Tahari, what is your opinion on that and also maybe what uh, the topic that Odetta touched, how important it is uh, to create your community, a supportive community um, that help you to grow and further develop and make the right introductions? Yeah, so um, uh, I, I I couldn't um, uh, agree more with, with uh, Odetta. So I um, like through uh, at least my journey, I I saw that like um, uh, as far as you are only focusing on the impact side, like you are getting interest, and even if you like get the chance to talk into the investors, there are still <clears throat> questions there that. Okay, like how how does this look like? How is it, where are you going to be in three years or in five years? Um, but like once you have um, a, like a concrete planning there, and also you you can show that uh, you can create revenue and you can stay sustainable. That um, that I guess is um, good enough to uh, to get the confidence to start uh, going for fundraising and going talking to investors and I guess more and more we can also uh, see that they are like going into that direction that um, I think it, it is still probably taking uh, some time uh, and uh, again also in line with the data it's uh, within different countries and continents it's different that the mindset on that and um, like where does um, the, the investment uh, would go for example I don't know as uh, once we have like the, the trends of space tech, fintech, uh, and then comparing to like uh, education, for example, so like, there are like let's say they are not sexy enough, but still uh, there are there are um, investors that are also interested uh, in, in that subject, maybe fewer, but um, as long as you can uh, show the uh, the progress there. Uh, I think we can be hopeful on that and uh, getting uh, yeah fruitful results. And also about the uh, uh, the pitches today. So um, we saw like different range of, range of projects, uh, but in total like very great ideas 
uh, and also very uh, nice execution of the ideas that we could see. So they were not only standing um, on the idea level, but some of them very well advanced. And uh, I, I learned a lot myself. And what I was constantly thinking about it was that um, how can different projects collaborate together? And uh, like if there are uh, some of them uh, like working in the same line, how can they get connected together and uh, maybe solve a bigger problem or like uh, share what they learn through their process that and like share that could be like sharing the um, uh, just what they learn, but it could also be the share of the resources and then like being able to uh, make a bigger impact. So that was uh, what was in, in the back of my mind constantly and uh, uh, trying to think that what could be the, the solution there. Tina, other than measuring and showing your impact very concretely, and I think it's a Im really important uh, input because it's a lot of, I mean, also today we heard so much about uh, the purpose that they have, but then if you cannot really break it down and measure and how do you measure your social impact. But um, on top of that, what is your uh, general recommendations or is there anything you want to share uh, with those young entrepreneurs? I would mainly, obviously, besides impact, I'd mainly say think about who you're trying to reach and how you're reaching them, particularly considering how there's many people that are to be left out from technology, digital technologies. How can you reach these hard to reach people? How can you engage them with your work? Because they typically might be the people that benefit from it the most. Um, looking at particularly the education sector, where we've learned that many young people don't have access to technology, which has left them very left out in the past year and a half when education has been online. So what can social enterprises, tech enterprises do to actually include them? That'd be my main bit of advice. To close the session, I want to have, um, I think we had it uh, earlier today in the health tech entrepreneurship through a gender lens uh, session, like your wish, ask, call to action, your main, what would you see as the most important thing that people have to sign up for or have to, what has to immediately change? Um, I might start my main wish would be that um, the decision makers and the government leaders take the same bold and fast and concrete decisions that they took uh, during the pandemic, um, that they also do the same for climate change. And finally, um, yeah, act and stop. I mean, talking is important, but also to do some concrete action and act faster because they impressively showed during the pandemic what is actually possible if they get together and take decisions. <laughs> Embrace technology. That will be two words I can say and to say and close up. Uh, embrace technology and uh, to use it for good. Uh, and this pandemic show us how we can use uh, for a greater good. Yeah, that will be my my that I can think of as a as a as a main message. Thank you, Gina. Um, so I would say typically use a bottom, try and use a bottoms up approach when designing your um, policies and ideas and in, interventions. So think about, again, people at the bottom, how you can help them most and actually consult with them and listen to their voices rather than speaking over people. I think we see that a lot of a lot of these high end, high level policy meetings that there's not many people in the room that are really affected by the issues. And I mean, there have been amazing solutions that we also already saw in WSA who support government leaders or decision makers to um, engage people and to engage citizens and get their inputs. So, yeah, the solutions would be there. <laughs> Odetta. I would say that uh, Nora, you and Dimitri really stole the show on, on this kind of wish. Uh, but if I have to make another wish uh, so that we don't kind of, you know, uh, we expand uh, the wishes <laughs> circle, um, I really wish that more people um, are not afraid to fail and are bold enough to take the lead of their life and to work where they actually feel fulfilled and inspired instead of, unfortunately, to say there is a lot of people who hate their, like, hate Mondays, right? So I wish that um, 
people would be enabled, would feel enabled and would become enabled and not afraid to actually start loving Mondays because of the work that you do. I really like Mondays, actually. <laughs> I imagine that everybody who is part of this uh, community loves Mondays because we do feel that we're making impact and like we're changing the world. But I just wish that more people would join us and, and, and would really feel that way as well. More love for Mondays. I agree. <laughs> Take away. Uh, yeah, just adding to the uh, others, uh, I think like the uh, policy makers, they are uh, somehow following uh, the, the lead of the uh, majority and uh, then uh, we need to like to, to be able to really make a change we need to first um, start with the uh, with education like educating the population and like changing the mindset first and um, starting it from the earliest moment on so that the the new next generation uh, they are already like um, well knowledge about uh, the situation as long as we are also educating the uh, adult generation but uh, I think uh, we can already see that new generation they have uh, potentials to um, receive it much easier. Thank you all. We make a three minutes break five minutes break and then we do the announcement of the two uh, European champions uh, that just competed earlier. Um, I would ask the four of you to just stay with me um, so that we have, since you all have been part of the jury, get a glass of champagne or beer or coffee, wine, whatever you fancy. Um, and let's celebrate uh, those two European champions. They are all winners already. Um, and the real and proper award ceremony will be in Graz, but we cannot uh, wait until May to let them know who won. That would be just too cruel. So five minutes break and then we announce the two winners. Welcome back. I hope you all have champagne in your hand and are ready to celebrate the winners. We heard 15 exciting pitches of the European Young Innovators and there will be now the announcement of the two overall winners, the two European champions. One um, part came from uh, WSA nominations, so best available content in the country who came through nominations and already won a national competition. And the second is the youth innovation uh, where the founding teams are younger than 26 years of age. The jury um, the votes were actually quite tight. It was not an easy de decision. I again want to mention that all of those 15 projects are already winners and will be celebrated at the um, European Young Innovators Festival in May in March. Thank you technicians for putting up the timer because I'm talking too long and everybody uh, wants to hear um, who are the winners. I have two members of the jury with me. Um, and if you are ready, Taha Ray will announce first the winner of the European Champion 2021. Taha Ray. So I'm very glad and honored to announce the winners. Um, all the projects were really great and to me they are all winners. But uh, yeah, after the jury selection, so the two winners are Circuit Mass from Croatia and Snap Study from Ireland. Congratulations. <laughs> and I have Odette with me. Uh, who is kind of the spokesperson for the jury and will very briefly share why circuit mass and snap study convinced the jury a tiny tiny whiny bit more than the rest <laughs> happy to uh it was definitely a difficult decision and we decided to uh choose the two winners first of all uh, circuit mass because of the great impact that they showed and actually being able to monetize uh, impact and really spread uh, the word and like actually have uh, a, well um, impact lives of so many children. 
Um, we really feel that you are doing great work and we hope that you continue uh, expanding and affecting more lives around the world. Um, and SNAP study, um, we were really impressed by the clever use of AI. Uh, to tell you the truth, we did see quite few projects that are helping students to create um, the cards for just kind of uh, learning and, and quicker progression through studies. However, we feel that using AI in this clever way uh, is really changing the game for students and will actually make it much easier and much quicker for students to learn. Thank you so much, uh, both of you. Congratulations to the winning teams. A proper award ceremony with real wine and real party and DJ and dance and the pictures and everything will be in Graz. Um, the second part of the festival with the winner's announcement and um, or the winner's celebration and mentoring sessions and discussion will happen on May 3rd and 4th in Graz, uh, south of Austria, and we hope to see you all there. Um, until then, we hope to stay in touch online. The next meeting point on a global level is the WSA um, Global Congress that will happen um, end of March. Unfortunately, also online, but on a really global level. And if you have been inspired by the 15 European Young Innovators today and are curious what happens globally, then definitely join the, Euro the WSA Global Congress. Thank you all. See you in March. See you in May in Graz. Congratulations again to the winners. And it was great to have you all. Thank you, Odetta. Thank you, Tahari. Thank you to our amazing technical team, Fabian, um, and his team to support, who supported us today. And also thank you to my team who did again a wonderful job. Thank you all. <laughs>